personal feelings or judgments based on factual information about different types of materials. And so what I'm calling this is a biome justification. How many of you have heard the word justify before? Just heard it. I say, can you justify your thinking? Or justify your decision? Can you justify your answer? Anybody know what it means to justify something? It's a big word. Justify or justification. It's a big, sophisticated word, but I want you to get in the habit of using it, and I want you to understand what it means before we go any further. So if I'm asking you to write a justification, I need to know that you guys know what it means to justify something. Um, Kaylee, what is a justification, or what does it mean to justify something? When you justify something, whether it's your math answer, maybe you have to justify your answer to a problem. Maybe you justify your thinking in reading by using evidence for the text. Maybe you justify a scientific decision or choice. So in this situation, we're focusing on our biome. And what I want you to do is justify your biome by really thinking about why you chose the materials you did and talk about why those are the best possible options to create the best biome possible. So it looks like right here, um, I have a due date for you, and I put it in bright yellow so nobody forgets what it is, nobody misses it. <coughs> the due date for this piece, this writing piece, is November 22nd, which seems like a far away way, but it's end of next week. So we have this week to work on it, as well as next week to work on it. And it should be done and completed by then, because it's really not a long piece. And a lot of what you are doing with your labs is going to help you do this piece. So you might be able to do some of it before you finish your labs, but some of it you'll need data from your labs to complete. So our learning target, just like any opinion writing piece, it says, I can compose an opinion piece that includes valid evidence and relevant and sufficient evidence. Valid means it's reliable and meaningful. Relevant means it's connected to what we're talking about, and again, meaningful. And sufficient means you have enough to really prove your thinking or justify the response. So our background statement, you guys know that recently we've been working on our biomes, right? We've been building up to that and you're all in different spots, but we've been conducting scientific research over the course of this whole trimester. We've been doing different labs, um, different experiments to look at soil composition. Um, right now you're presenting your own labs to look at different types of building materials like wood, clay, metal, for example. And then I said architectural shapes. So when I say architectural shapes, what I mean by that might be, any ideas? If I said, what's an art, like architecture is the way a building is designed or built in the stuff. What do you think I mean when I talk about you're doing labs on soil composition, you're doing labs on building materials, and you're also doing labs on architectural shapes? Eli, what do you think that's about? Um, maybe the different kind of shapes you could do. Absolutely. Like, what are some of the shapes you might use? Rectangle, square. Um, square, square, triangular shaped buildings. If you think about those in three dimensional shapes, there might be cubes, <coughs> pyramids, things like the that. Pentagon. So, your job is to think about those experiments that you're planning right now, or some of you will be conducting very shortly. You can think back to the permeability labs um, and other solar composition things you've done previously. But your job is to work like a strong scientist. And we know that strong scientists and engineers are able to communicate. They share their findings with other people. They talk about their thinking with other scientists within their community. And they're able to justify or prove why their choices, why they did those things. Um, they can justify their choices by using evidence to support their opinions and findings. So just like in literacy, when you say something about a text, and I ask you to use text evidence to support your thinking. Or just like when you write an opinion piece about why we need longer recess, you need to give evidence to support your thinking. You are also going to use evidence to support your thinking in this piece. So here's your actual task. Here's what you need to do as a writer. It says write an opinion piece that explains why your biome, soil, building materials, and architectural shapes, why all those things put together your final piece, why well, your biome is the best combination of options for standing up to erosion. So you are going to write an opinion piece saying, my biome.
microbiome is the best, the best, because, and you'll talk about why you use the best soil composition, you can use evidence from your labs. So as you are doing your own labs in the next week, you can use your data or observations as supporting evidence.
shape. The building materials and your architectural shape or the shape of your structure. You want to make sure you're including details and that could be evidence, supporting evidence that you pull from your data, from your labs, or other experiences you've had in STEAM. Or if you feel like you need to go out and do more research, you certainly could have these closer devices. Um, we want to look for transition words, and this is a tricky spot. But transition words, like next, then, finally. But sometimes they look like, for instance, in addition, because those help link thoughts together. Um, we also want to include a, a concluding paragraph or ending that kind of reminds readers of your opinion, takes a little bit from each paragraph, and then wraps it all together. We'll talk about self-editing and your editing a little bit, and that kind of wraps in these pieces here. And then Mr. Demers and I will also be here to help you with your editing. And then at the bottom, the language criteria. Language means things like punctuation, grammar, spelling, those pieces. And if you need help with that, certainly feel free to talk to me. I can help you with that, or Mr. Demers. Um, and those will be things that we'll try to include in all of our mini lessons, too. But things like using correct, correct verb tense, correct punctuation, things like commas, exclamation points, um, periods when needed. Using commas to separate an introductory element, which I'm guessing some of you probably don't even know what that means. Totally fine, I'll help you with that. And thinking about your best spelling, because as scientists and engineers, we want to be taken seriously, right? We want people to know how smart we are, how awesome our ideas are. But if I type something, like if I sent Mr. Clark an email with this brilliant idea I had, but I didn't punctuate it, and I didn't capitalize my letters, and I spelled them something wrong, is he going to think I'm really brilliant? No. Not so much. Is he going to take me really seriously? No. He's probably going to be so distracted by all my grammar errors that he won't even think about how wonderful my ideas are. So that's an important piece of your writing as well. So you can use this as a checklist to kind of guide as you write, but this is also going to be the rubric that we use just for you on all of these different